guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to make applesauce. Applesauce is one of my kids' favorite snacks in the wintertime. I personally love it when it's a little bit chunky and I heat it up in the wintertime and add brown sugar and cinnamon. So, so delicious. We live in the north and this is about as big as our apples get. This is more average. <laughs> so these ones actually came off my apple trees outside that you guys saw me plant in the forest garden a couple of years ago. We, most of these apples we actually picked from a couple of friends in town. You can usually find them this time of year for really cheap or free. I've been picking off of these apple trees from friends in town for the last three years and I just usually drop them off some honey when I take my honey off of my hives as a little bit of a trade. But if you notice that one of your neighbors has a laid-in tree and the apples are just sitting there, don't hesitate to go knock on the door and ask because most people don't have time to deal with apples on their apple trees or certainly don't need the amount of apples that they're growing. And not only that, but a lot of people have bear issues and the fruit attracts the bears, so they wanna get the fruit off the trees as soon as possible. And in fact, when we went and picked crab apples the other day, there was a bear in the tree when we got there. My kids thought that was very cool. So I'm just gonna give, run you through the basics of making a simple applesauce and how I do it. Let's get this off the counter. So I wonder if we can see me and the cutting board at the same time here. Kitchen videos are not really my jam. I really need to uh, get better at that. Okay, there we go. All right, there, now we can see the cutting board and me at the same time. So what I do is I take my big pot Okay, we're gonna pretend for a second that this pot isn't already filled with cooked apples because it is. <laughs> I started this project yesterday. So I just coarsely chop my apples. I try to keep them around the same size. Because I'm gonna be running my apples through a food mill, which I'll show you in just a second, I don't worry about removing stems or cores or anything like that. I just chop, chop them up roughly like so, trying to keep them all relatively the same size. I'll put this on the stove and add about half as much water to the amount of apples and that's just to stop scorching on the bottom. And I'll cook them down until they are soft like we have here. This is, oh, that's heavy. So you can see that's what they look like when they've cooked down. And I'll often let them cool before I run them through the food mill. I've already started milling um, apples this morning, so my food mill is not clean <laughs> at the moment. I use an OMAC food mill. These ones are made in Italy. I bought this one at Canadian Tire, I believe, and I've been using it for years, and it's fantastic, and I love it. It is a manual food mill. You can buy electric food mills, but uh, this one works just fine, and I think it was around $30 or something like that. It wasn't too expensive. So I add my apples into my mill like so, and then just turn the handle. And what this does is it removes the skins and the seeds as well as the stems. And after a couple of batches have been run through, uh, you need to empty the mill or scrape it out. And sometimes a spoon to scrape down the sides is needed. We are having the most gorgeous autumn weather this year that I am so grateful for. We've only had one light frost so far, which is fabulous because normally we've had several by now and even sometimes a killing frost, which is great for the garden. And I'm enjoying it because as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of winter. So I'm enjoying every last warm and sunny day I can get. I'm running this through a pretty fine um, screen. I'll show you in just a second. Because um, I really don't want the skins in there. You can make applesauce with skins. You can just blend it up if you core them and blend them up. But I just personally don't like skins in them. I'll just scrape off the bottom here and show you. So those are the skins that are left. I'll scrape those out and those will go to the chickens 
And then let's see if I can tip this without losing a bunch. And then that's the size of screen that I'm using on the bottom. And then I take my sauce and I put it back in my pot that I cooked down the apples in originally. I like hot packing pretty much everything when it comes to canning and I'm gonna be canning this. So I'm gonna heat it back up again. I'm gonna run through all of these apples through the mill and then I'll show you the next step. Oh, one thing, when you are using your food mill, if you run the mill backwards, it kind of scrapes off the screen and then it's really easy to scrape out your, um, where did I put my spoon? Your skins. I'm gonna add a little bit of organic cane sugar to this because it's not quite sweet enough. A little bit too sour. Oh, the flies, flies are so gross. So I'll just add a little bit. You can just sweeten to taste. And then I will heat this back up on the stove and then I'll show you my canning process for it. I have my nine quart canner set up over here. It's just about hot enough. One of the tricks that I always do, because we have slightly hard water, it's not too bad, but even if you have soft water, I find that um, you can end up with white scaly on your canning jar. So I always add vinegar to it and that completely gets rid of the problem. Just a couple tablespoons for a so canner that size. You'll need some grabbers for your jars to pull them out of your canner. Although to be honest, I just bought these a couple of years ago. I just used an oven mitt and burned my fingers repeatedly for the 20 years previous to that. And then also a funnel to be able to funnel in your sauce into your jars. Make sure when you're heating up your applesauce, you do stir it regularly because it will scorch pretty easily. It's pretty heavy. Where did I put my lid? I am really excited with all the crab apples that we got from the place with the bear the other day. Uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Let me show you. Look at these beautiful crab apples. Aren't those gorgeous? I am going to try my hand at making crab apple fruit leather, which is something that a friend of mine suggested that I make. And then I am going to also make crab apple jelly, which is probably my favorite jelly of all time and I'll do that in an upcoming video. Just about hot enough. Make sure your jars are warm or hot even um, when you put your hot product in just so you don't crack them. I've seen people add uh, cinnamon to their applesauce but for me I prefer to add it after because some of my kids like it and some of my kids don't and that way we can just season it with the um, cinnamon to our preference. You can also add things like nutmeg, allspice, any of those yummy autumn tasting spices. All right, now our sauce is nice and hot. I have my jars here and my funnel. Keep a damp cloth handy so that you can wipe off the rims of your jars and fill your jars up so that they have about a quarter inch of headspace. So headspace is the space between the, your lid and the food itself. And that just helps to provide a good seal. And these will can in a water bath canner for 20 minutes. So if you can see the amount of space that I have between my product and where the lid will go. And these will can in a water bath canner for 20 minutes. You'll hear an expression called finger tight. So, and that basically means exactly what it sounds like. You take the tips of your fingers and you turn it until you can't turn it anymore. Don't really reef on it and don't go below your fingertips like this because you'll have way more strength to do that. You do want to leave a tiny little bit of space for any air to escape from your jars. Okay, we're going to get the rest of this applesauce run through the mill so that we can get a full canner. I love this nine quart canner because I can fit so much into it. And I'll bring you back when we're done and we're pulling everything out of the canner. When you put your jars in the canner, make sure that you have an inch of water over the top of your jars and set your timer once this comes to a boil. When you're taking your stuff out of your canner, if you just put a towel down, it'll soak up any extra water you have on your jars because there always is some. One of the things that I did forget to mention 
is to try to remove air bubbles from whatever product it is you're canning. So just use a knife, stick it down around the edges and the sides just to remove air bubbles. Once you take your jars out of the canner, let them sit on the counter. I usually do overnight and then the next morning I'll wipe them all down, make sure everything is sealed and you can tell that things are sealed when the lid, this is pretty hot, <laughs> but when it is in concave like so, make sure that you remove your rings from your jars before you move them into your pantry. The rings can give you something called a false seal. It makes it, looks like it look like it's sealed, but it isn't. It's always good to take your rings off and then just give your lids a little bit of a tug, just not a huge tug, but just a little bit of a pull just to make sure everything is sealed well. I have one more batch of applesauce to go through the canner and then I'm going to get on to making the crab apple jelly, which I'm really excited about and that will hopefully be in a video coming up here in the next week. I hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you again next time. Bye!